How will the Rajasthan Royals fare in IPL 2019? What does their squad look like? What are the areas of concern? What's the ideal 11? Where will they eventually finish? Those are questions for Brad Hodge and Ajit Agarkar to answer as we look ahead to their IPL 2019 season. Let's have a look at uh, the squad first and then perhaps uh, cast our eye on uh, Ajit and Brad's analysis. Now, Steve Smith's return is perhaps the biggest highlight that will surround not just Rajasthan, but the entire world of cricket once he plays high-profile cricket in Rajasthan Royals colours. Uh, Ariman Birla has got uh, some runs in first-class cricket for MP. Liam Livingstone's getting runs in the PSL. They've got some Indian batsmen as well uh, in uh, Riyan Parag. Of course, a bulk of it depends on those three names. Dorane, the captain, Rahul Tripathi and Manan Vora are uh, all going to be key as far as the keeping options go. Butler, for whenever he's available, you'd assume would be straight up top. A mistake that Rajasthan made putting him there only halfway through the season. Sanju Sampson's a prolific IPL run-getter too. As far as the all-rounders go, there's Jofra Archer from the overseas contingent. So too, Ben Stokes and Ashton Turner, who comes off a good BBL with the Perth Scotchers. Krishna Pagautam was good for them too last season. There are wrist-spinning options. Ish Sodi amongst them. Midun is a leggy. So too, Ishtreya's Gopalu, you missed out in the previous list. And Dhaval Kulkarni, Oshain Thomas, Jaydev Unatkar, who's not gone for as much money this season, alongside Varun Aaron for the fast bowling. Right, if you look at all the squads, there are some good players in that team too, but if you look at all the squads, somewhere you'd think that Rajasthan's team does not intimidate like a Sunrisers or a Mumbai or a Chennai. Yeah, I mean, those three teams are really settled and the nucleus has been the same for a while. So, it's much easier to just add one or two players to make it stronger, which isn't the case with Rajasthan. Although Rajasthan, a couple of auctions back, spend a lot of money mm -hmm. and they still don't seem to have a team which can seriously challenge and yeah. challenge for the title. So, uh, like you said, some really good players, uh, Stokes, Butler, you know, Rahane had shown some early, f sort of early IPLs had shown some yeah. form at the top of the order, seems to have, uh, seem, doesn't seem to have the same sort of impact uh, when he plays now. Sanju Samson looks good every time he bats, uh, whether he can have, be their player who carries them in the tournament, you still have question marks. Mm -hmm. Steve Smith comes back. Uh, might give them a bit more uh, teeth, some you know experience, some great uh, quality, obviously. Uh, but still, the short squad looks short. Uh, yeah. Jofra Archer's that uh, sort of X factor, if you like, uh, mm -hmm. in the bowling. But apart from that, uh, there's not a lot of uh, dependency or quality. I mean, Unatkat, yeah. yes, Dhawal Kulkarni, all experienced uh, sort of first-class season campaigners. But you uh, you almost look at that squad and you feel uh, there's not enough there. All right, not enough. Would you go with that as well, Haji? Now, Steve Smith, I spoke to Ajinkya Rahane ahead of this season and he said they're looking forward to Steve Smith. He's going to be big for their plans. Would you want to invest a lot of faith in Steve Smith, who's just about making his way back to top-level cricket? Well, I mean, he was a skipper of T20 sides, wasn't he? So he's got a lot of knowledge and experience and uh, he's a pretty good player of spin. Um, handy middle-order player. Uh, what I like about... Yeah, the strengths of this Rajasthan side is they, they've got a group of fighters. They fight pretty hard. Josh Butler was a standout last year. So getting that right combination at the top was a real tricky one. Um, you know, the form of uh, Stokes last year was up and down. So they've got the potential to have a really strong middle order. Uh, they lack a little bit of flexibility with the ball, I think. The spin department also, you know, the quicks. Uh, it just doesn't seem to have enough X factor in it for my liking. And then who have you gone for there for, for your uh, X-Factor players? I think you've put your investment in Joss Butler, who was big for them last season, haven't you? Yeah, it's not surprising. I mean, unfortunately, the, we're not sure about, you know, the commitment that how long he's going to be there yeah. for. So, um, you know, that's a real testing one. Though he'll be sadly lost if he's not there for the whole tournament. But, uh, you know, he's an unbelievable player. Just all-round game and 360-dimensional players is phenomenal cricketer. Yeah, I mean, Josh Butler is big uh, for them and he's coming off good, uh, off big runs uh, for England as well. Indeed, 20 since 2018, that's, that's a particularly good number. Strike rate of 145 and we know the value Josh Butler brings. Keeper batsman as well, just adds so much to this team. Availability, yes, is a question mark. We think the latter part of the tournament, perhaps the England players won't be available. So that makes it hard for them to replace Butler and Stokes. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a case with a lot of teams, though. Yeah. I think uh, some other teams are going to miss players as well. I that's think they don't have quite the replacements that some possibly, of the others do. Possibly, but you, yeah. you, that's why you want to get off to a quick start, uh, if you can, when these guys are available. So then that makes your tournament easier, yeah. They are exactly numbers tell you the story, well. yeah. what it did for them last year, uh, tells you the story. Bats that can bat at different positions uh, and a wicketkeeper, so uh, all-rounder. 
So you're going with Butler for that X factor. You got someone else that you've picked for the Rajasthan Royals player to watch out for? No, no I've, I've picked Stokes. Yeah. Uh, just uh, as an all-rounder, what he did when he played for Pune, mm. uh, the season that he had, they got to the finals. Someone with that kind of quality, yep. uh, where he can bat uh, middle, lower middle order, uh, and impact games, and then come and bowl his four overs, uh, makes a huge difference to the team. If he's in good form, uh, especially because Rajasthan, we don't have as much depth in the squad. Yeah. Uh, guys like him need to have big seasons for them uh, to do well. Mm. Slightly up and down uh, for Ben Stokes last season, but we yeah. know that he was in a different mindset as well with everything going on personally with Ben Stokes in this case. That seems to have cleared out. He seems to be a real force for England in white ball cricket. So let's see if the Rajasthan Royals can also count on him. What about the playing 11s then? Assuming everyone's fit and available, we know the likes of Stokes and Butler will be missing once England summon them for international duty. But let's have a look at Ajit Agarkar's uh, playing 11. And there is one criticism of uh, the top order of uh, the Rajasthan Royals, Ajit, that perhaps there are too many guys that play one way. Rahane, Tripathi, Sanju Samson, you want Josh Butler opening, in which case Steve Smith too is not ideally suited for the middle order as much as he is for the top order. Their thoughts on your team? I think Rahane has got to open. I don't think uh, out of all those Rahane, you know, probably be the anchor in the team and uh, try and bat uh, through that innings. Uh, uh, Tripathi can still, you know, bat quickly or try, uh, plays a few more shots. So, and then you can be flexible with that order. There's there's a lot of quality there. I mean, Samson, uh, Butler, uh, Smith, and uh, Stokes, all yeah. four can bat at various positions and uh, bat against spin and pace alike. Uh, and do it well. So, there is a lot of pedigree there. Mm. It's whether all, all of them can perform before they actually leave to yeah. go and prepare for the World Cup. So, uh, yeah, they can shuffle their squad or their batting as, as they would like. Uh, is their bowling? I mean, Archer needs to step up sure. uh, for them to have, have a real impact with the ball because the rest of it, although there's some experience in Unadkat and Dhawal, uh, you always feel that the X factor is always going to be Archer with his with the kind of numbers that he has in T20 cricket. Okay, what about Brad Hodges' first eleven for the Rajasthan Royals? And just have a look at uh, this team now to see if he's made any changes. Jofra Archer is going to be big, is what we do know. Barun Aaron also is a fast bowling option that they do have, but that's essentially the look of uh, that team for Hodge Rahane. Would you go with Butler at the top of the order to open as well, Hodge? Yeah, look, probably I would have put the Sanju Sampson at number three. But look, they were pretty solid at the top. Um, I thought Butler in particular was, was excellent and Sanju Sampson had a great season. So you need to get the best out of Stokes, as Ajit mentioned. He's a real X factor, there's no doubt. Um, but I think that, that to go forward, their bowling was a real issue. Um, and if you put all your eggs in one basket, job for Archer, it's really, really hard. So they need to spread that load a little bit. Other guys need to step up. But all in all, uh, their spin department looks a little bit of an issue um, compared to the quality around other teams. So, you know, getting the best out of that. The one thing about Rajasthan, they're all fighters and they're a good team unit. So that's generally how they operate. All right. Thoughts then on whether this team will fight their way through to the top four, Hodge, or do you think it's going to be a struggle? No, I can't see them featuring in the top four. I think they um, yeah, outplayed themselves last year, actually, just on the back of Josh Butler. And look, that can happen in T20 <laughs> cricket, there's no doubt. But I think that when they lose those stars, I think it's going to be uh, a real tough road for Rajasthan. All right, so you're going for a, you're giving me a position like you did with Punjab? Yeah, I, even probably further down the list, actually. <laughs> so, not, not, I, don't think, I can't see it being a good year for Rajasthan only because. You know, the loss of those players will be probably detrimental to their success. Very well. Why don't we have a look at the Punjab preview where Brad Hodge has given away where he thinks Punjab will end and therefore Rajasthan below them. Are you going for Rajasthan to finish at the foot of the table as well? Yeah, I can't imagine them getting into the top four. I mean, at least uh, before the tournament started, like I said before, you know, who knows, uh, uh, three or four guys can, uh, you know, have massive seasons and get them to the playoffs and then it's anyone's game. But uh, at this point, looking at their team, I think uh, I can't imagine them getting in the top four. Okay, so plenty of work for Ajink Arahane and Paddy Upton then ahead of this season. Will they punch above their weight like they usually do? We'll find out for the Rajasthan Royals in IPL 2019. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and leave your comments in the comment section below. Click on the bell icon for notifications.